and welcome to another tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use a render texture. I'm sure there's all sorts of uses for it, but the biggest one is to display what one camera sees onto a game object in the game. I'm going to show you how to use it. There's lots of great tutorials on how to do a render texture. It's so easy. I can show you how to do it in probably less than a minute. But the big part of this tutorial and the reason that I'm doing it is I wanted to make sure that everyone didn't run into the same issue I did, which was if you're trying to use like an asset you purchased from the Unity Asset Store or elsewhere, the UV settings not being quite right and your render texture not working. So here we go. Let's look at the basics of how a render texture works. So here's just a basic scene that I threw together and we need a, de a device and a game object. We need a game object to display the render texture on. So the easiest type to use for this, which is probably the most common would be a quad. So I'm gonna go to create a 3D object. I just right clicked in my hierarchy there and I'm just gonna do a little quad. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and zero my quad out on the transforms. Okay, so um, there's my screen. Uh, I'm going to fiddle with it just a little bit more. I just don't quite like that's That's where I'm going to go. So right now, all it has is just a, a default material on it. So what we need to go on it is a, uh, a render texture. So that's simple enough to create. So in my assets folder, just to stay organized, I'm going to create a new folder. And in this folder, um, I'll put my texture, but let's call this folder textures. And then I'm going to go ahead and right click again down here and go to create and go to render texture. And I'm just going to leave it its default name. And what's cool about the render texture is that you can just drag it onto the item. And what it'll do is it creates the material. So textures and materials are different. It took me a while to wrap my head around that when I first started using Unity. Um, but textures and materials are different. And what it did is it actually created a materials folder for us and put the render material in there. And this material is on um, our little quad. Now, it's not really showing us anything yet because we don't have anything being rendered to our texture. So I'm going to go to my main camera. And in your cameras, they always have this target texture path. So I'm going to then go to my textures, grab my render texture and drag it on there. And boom, Bob's your uncle. There's our render texture. Our active camera is now rendering onto um, our render texture. Now, typically what will normally be done here is um, I'm going to go ahead and clear that out. What would normally be done here is it would be done by a second camera at least in all of ways that I've used it. Uh, so I'm going to now go ahead and create a camera and let's just zero it out and let's move it up. I don't know, 10. That is rotation. <laughs> let's move its position up 10 and let's rotate it 90 degrees down. Uh, no, we need to rotate a 180 degrees. Where are you looking at camera? It's rotated around here zoom out. Where is my camera looking? Zero out the rotation. Oh, I need to rotate it maybe on the Z90. No. <laughs> Philip, you're so good at this. Rotate on the X90. That's what I wanted. <laughs> All right. So now if I come back here to my scene. Okay. So now I have two cameras. So I'm going to rename this camera to just Keep in mind what it is. I'm gonna call this my render camera. And now on my render camera, I'm going to now put this render texture into the target texture and boom, now we have a bird's eye view on this little screen here. Pretty simple, right? So let's see what happens if we try to use something a bit more complex, not just a Unity um, uh, 3D object. So I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm a, I have a lot of polygon assets. So I'm going to go into this polygon sci-fi space one. And I'm actually just going to go into one of their demo interior scenes. Sure, save my last scene. Why not? This will take a bit to load. I've used this scene in uh, one of my last tutorials that I did for Playmaker. All right, so here I am in the scene. And uh, let's zoom out to see where we're at. All right, so I know there's a bridge component in here. Yes, I want to go to the bridge. All right, so here we have our bridge. All right, but maybe um, the captain 
isn't always in the bridge. And our game camera is already in the bridge. You can see that it's current angle. <clears throat> and I like that. I'm actually going to use that as my render camera. I really like that angle. All right, but I think I have an office somewhere with a desk. Here we go. This one's bigger. I thought there was a desk in here. You know what? We'll use this. Let's say that I want just this face to be a render texture. Now look at this object here. All right, this game object's got a lot to it. There's a lot going on with it. But all I want to do is just use this one little face here that I want to make for my render texture. Well, while I'm thinking about it, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to go ahead and create a camera. And right now my camera is looking outside, so I'm going to go while I have my camera selected. I'm going to go to game object, move to view, and then I'm going to go to game object, align with view, and boom. Now my uh, what's going to be my new main camera. I'll go ahead and rename it. All right, so. I need to be able to get to just one of the faces for this object. Why can't I click on it? What, what's that? Oh, I'm clicking on the camera. <sighs> Let's move out of the way of my camera. Turn Gizmos back on. All right. So here's the game object that I want to display a render texture on. Let's zoom out our sensitivity there. Um, so I can do this one of two ways. What's probably the easiest way for me is to take it into Blender. But even if you know how to use Blender, maybe you hate using two applications, so you'd like to keep everything in Unity if you can. So um, Pro Builder is an asset that you can add for free just from the Package Manager. If you go into the Package Manager and you uh, make sure you're not searching anything, and you go to Unity Registry and just type Pro Builder, It'll come up and you can install it. But if you want to use a game object that you didn't create with Pro Builder, you have to Pro Builderize it. So I can just click Pro Builderize and it'll do it. Or I can click on this plus icon and I can tell it how much I want to smooth it and whatnot. All right, but I'm just going to go ahead and use the defaults. Let's see what happens if I just Pro Builderize this game object. Boom. <clears throat> Not too bad. It doesn't look like... Um, Really, any of my UVs got messed up. So UVs is what tells the game object for the texture file it's using, which faces go in what part of the texture file. So really, it's not looking too bad. <clears throat> so if I come in here, um, I need to switch my Pro Builder object selection to just faces. <clears throat> and I just want, if you remember, I just wanted this device to be my screen. So I'm going to select all these faces. So I'm shift clicking all these faces here. Good. It worked out that it's relatively rectangular. Sometimes in some of these, I'll get a lot of weird angle shapes on them. And then I have to, I have to go and do something completely else to make it work or import it into Blender. But now I have these, ob these faces selected. I can go to detach faces but I want to make sure that I detach it to a specific thing, either as a game object or a sub mesh. But I do want it as a completely new game object just because that's what I want. All right, so it's been detached. Now, sometimes when you do that, it'll break your game object because those faces may have been important um, to hold some of the other vertices in place. But in this case, it did. It just put a little hole in my original mesh, which is perfect. I'm gonna undo that move. Did I not undo the move? Okay, let's undo translate. There we go. All right, so now on this guy, and I want to name this um, uh, private screen, just so I don't lose it. And I want to make sure there's no parent on it. So I'm going to go game object, clear parent. Great. So now I should be able to collapse the interiors. There we go. There's my private screen. Okay, and I got my render camera. So my private screen... Let me switch to, instead of face selection, let's switch it to uh, object selection. On my private screen now, I want to have a render texture. 
So I can uh, go into my textures folder and I want to create a new render texture because the other one is using a camera from a different scene. And although I could probably still reuse it, but I'm going to call this private screen, I don't know, RT for render texture. Right, I'm going to take this and I'm going to drag it there. Boom. Blackness. All right. And it should have created in the materials folder my new private screen material. Excellent. So now if we go to our render camera, okay, remember our render camera is in the bridge. And now I can take my private screen. Oh, yeah. No, that's once the target texture, not material. Uh, go back to textures, private screen texture, put it on the target texture. What happened? Something's not right. So if I go to my private screen, I can see that I have the private screen material on here, but something is just not quite right. And this would also happen if I had done this the exact same way in Blender. I could have imported this game object into Blender and I could have detached those faces and um, then re-exported it, brought the whole game object back into the scene and tried to replace it. Um, but I might have still ran into this issue. Um, because this game object was already pre-set up, it's UV set up for a different texture. So what I need to do is I need to remap the UVs. So with my private screen selected, I'm gonna go to my UV editor. All right, and um, I found that I have to do like vertices selection here. And I'm just going to select all my vertices. And I'm going to, uh, oh, in here, what is it? Just select faces. And let's project it as a box. Boom, there it is. All right. Um, but you notice it's not quite the, the, the angle that I wanted because this is a much smaller space to project onto than what our render camera has. All right, so now I could, now that I have my render camera selected, I could now adjust my rotation, maybe on the X. Yeah, there we go. I can adjust the the rotation on the X and maybe get a uh, better angle or maybe even increase my field of view, right? See, really get what I want to see there. Uh, you could also uh, utilize scripting or Playmaker to adjust these things on the fly um, in uh, during gameplay if, if you want to have the ability for the player to zoom in and out. But what if uh, <clears throat> what if I don't really like the look of it? First off, I'm also going to remove this audio listener because you don't want to have more than one audio listener in your scene anyways. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that because I don't need it. You may have reasons to just deactivate it and reactivate the certain ones when you want them. Um, but now what I want to do is I want to, if we go back to our private screen, maybe I want this to look uh, brighter or just different. You can still affect, you can still add a shader to this. Um, all I've really messed with so far is I've just gone to unlit and I just made it a texture because that's what I'm using. I'm using a texture. If I go to texture, unlit, just makes it a little bit brighter. So um, because it's unlit, the lighting in the scene does not impact that. Um, but maybe you have like a, uh, I wonder what low poly waters texture would do. Let's try light. Yeah, I totally jacked it up. <laughs> that's not gonna work. Oh, what about Cinti's? Cinti's got some shaders in their thing. Spaceship rim, any idea? No, that ain't gonna work. Um, but you can just come in here and you can play around with um, either some of the built-in shaders or if you know how to make your own shader, make your own. But that's essentially what you need to do if you want to use a texture render on a game object you didn't make uh, because those game objects were already UV mapped onto a different texture. And so now that you're using a new texture, you have to edit the UVs. I was also gonna show you how to do this in Blender as well, but if you know how to use Blender, you should be able to, to translate what I just did using Pro Builder and Blender as well. And uh, that wraps up this tutorial. All right, so give it a shot. Render textures are really cool. It allows you to do things like security screen feeds, view screen feeds, all sorts of options. Until next time, I've been Philip. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial.